Hi, and welcome to Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. And Transformers vs. G.I. Joe. I'm Matt Zioli. And you can check out my Patreon at patreon.com. Just search Tom Scholey. Follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey. Follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore two. We just got done talking about uh, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, the comic that, that I spent a number of years working on and I'm very proud of. And now we're going to talk about the trailer for the upcoming G.I. Joe movie Snake Eyes, the Snake Eyes origin story. I think it's just called Snake Eyes or is it called Snake Eyes Origins or something? I think it might just be called Snake Eyes. Uh, oh, oh, wait. Snake Eyes, G.I. Joe, Joe origins. origins. And that's coming out in July. Yes. Really looking forward to it. I mean, Snake Eyes... G.I. Joe is an ensemble. Transformers is an ensemble. But if, you know, push came to shove uh, and you had to make a G.I. Joe main character, it would be Snake Eyes. If you had to make a Transformers main character, it's Optimus Prime. Like, it, like, like if, if, these, if, if they stopped being an ensemble and, you know, so it's like, Yes, Snake Eyes. You, you take away everything else. As long as you got Snake Eyes, you're good to go. When I was, like, really little, like, I would I would think Snake Eyes is, is was bad just because, like, I'd be like, Storm Shadow is good because he's, he's dressed in white and then, like, Snake Eyes is evil. But that, then I was like, okay. Well, it, yeah, it's like the visual language of Hollywood and all that kind of stuff is, is like, you know, cowboy movies where it's like the cowboy with the white hat is the good guy and the cowboy with the black hat is the bad guy. So you're kind of like... Yeah, following that that um, conditioning, you know, that, that we got from movies. As far as, like, the G.I. Joe uh, movies go, I love them. Uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're, they're two for two. Like, oh, or, or, like, for the live action ones, they're two for two. I love both of them. But then, like, yeah, the G.I. Joe animated movie from yes. 1986. Oh, my God. 87. Uh, well, I can't remember the year yeah. on that one. But that, like, shook me to the core. Oh, yeah. When, um, who, who was killed? I can't, uh, Duke. Duke. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it really it, it, uh, it wiped your it brain out. For, it, you know, that's how much it affected you. And then, and uh, <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like <laughs> uh, <laughs> it rendered you comatose. <laughs> yes, it, uh, yeah, you uh, you just like passed out and uh, lost a portion, like or you're blocking it out because it was so traumatic. I'm repressing it. It's a repressive repress memory. Well, so, you know what? So it, repressive it, camera. <laughs> You probably, they, you probably don't remember the ending of the movie because the ending of the movie there's like this voiceover saying hey Duke's okay because <laughs> they were going to kill him and they animated it as such animated movies being very expensive and then they screened Transformers the movie and kids freaked out over Optimus Prime dying so like okay we're not going to do this to Duke too so they added hey Duke's <laughs> going to be okay we're all that beautiful bean footage like they're, they're, they're at um, Duke's funeral and they're like lowering him, him into the ground, and I was like, "Duke's gonna be okay." <laughs> Just his hand like bunch out of the ground. <laughs> they, everyone screams. They, they 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 draw like there's just like this bad drawing of a hand, like Poochie on you know, <laughs> bad drawing of a hand. Go, hey, Duke's gonna be all right. I just got word. Duke's gonna be okay. <laughs> Yippee. He's laying in his cat. They're, in they're, open yeah, cats. and they're all like at the funeral, and they're all like <laughs> crying about, and, and it's like, oh, yippee, Duke's gonna make it. <laughs> they're all like, dressed in black. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's he's already he's like embalmed and stuff. He's like his sunken cheeks. And they're like, they're like, I think he's gonna pull through. <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, uh, Scarlet's like pounding on the on the coffin, like. <laughs> I no, he's in, he's been cremated. Yeah. <laughs> There's an urn there. Like, yeah, they're sprinkling uh, his ashes. And like, hey, Duke's gonna make it after all. But yeah, so I understand why you forgot why why you were super traumatized by seeing Duke get killed, but then forgot all, who it was that got killed. Now, was it uh, you know was it Skidmark? <laughs> Which G.I. Joe was it that got it's killed? Serpentor. Is it Serpentor? That yeah, it's a really he weird way to go. He, he throws like, the... Is it he, like... he takes a snake, straightens it like Thulsa uh, Doom uh... in Conan, straight, straightens it out, makes it into a spear, throws it, and then this, like, snake... Like, think about... It's like... They talk about, like... Like in the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves movie where he's like, I'm going to carve your heart out with a spoon, and it's going to hurt because it's, it's not sharp because it's blunt. It's like, yeah, that must really hurt having, like, this snake's head uh, penetrate your chest. Because uh, Serpentor was like, I'd cancel Christmas. G.I. Joe cartoon movie before I ever saw, like, the Arnold Schwarzenegger 
uh, Conan. I think I saw Conan the Destroyer before that, but I, I hadn't seen the original Conan with Thulsa Doom and stuff. So then when I finally did see, you know, that and see Thulsa Doom take a snake, go like a, sh turn it into an arrow and like shoot somebody with it, I was like, this is so cool. This is like, this is like a cool version, uh, you know, of the G.I. Joe movie. That, you know. uh, in, on the cartoon too, when like the planes blow up and they like parachute out or like yeah. sw swapping out like machine guns for like laser lasers. Yeah, you know. How about that that animate that intro for the animated movie? Like that's like some of the best animation I've ever seen oh like, of like like the pre credit sequence. And I from what I understand, it was something that, that like the animators just like it wasn't part of the the script or anything. It was just the animators kind of being like, "Hey, what if we, you know, let us take the lead for a minute?" And and so they were just like freestyling and improvising and made this like incredible well, sequence. Um, Almost like a mini movie in itself. So yeah, did, let's talk about the Snake Eyes trailer. Like, did it? Like, what was your reaction to it? I was vibing out on the uh, just the feel of it. It, mm -hmm. it reminded me of kind of like. Um, well, I mean, it really was like a teaser. Like, you didn't get too much. Like a fa like Fast and the, fast the Furious. A little, little yeah. fast, like um, a sprinkling of Fast and the Furious, uh, a sprinkling of not really the Matrix, but like there's another another like couple like few yeah. movies that like. I mean, I am not up on my like action movie like i've never seen any of the uh i haven't seen any jason statham movies I, so i'm not up to so i'm sure there's like a bunch of stuff i'm not you know versed it, in yeah it's, it feels That's like it's very influential yeah, yeah. also maybe like a christopher nolan's like okay kind of, like, yeah batman yeah it, yeah it looked like i didn't see cgi like it, it seemed like a lot of practical, practical. So, again we're just seeing like quick glimpses i was kind of excited just from like some of the um some of like the press surrounding it that like Larry Hama is like you yes. know is directly involved. I'm not sure sure what I credit saw he got. Some like, featurettes uh, briefly too. I know we're just getting tastes of it, but he, yeah. he's like on he's on, on the set. set. Yeah, that's awesome. That's, isn't that cool? Yeah, that's cool. That that that's that says a lot. You know that 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 uh, you know like they're they're doing it right basically. Yeah. It's, you know we got Scarlet, we got Snake Eyes, we got the Baroness. You know. Got Storm Shadow. Like you can't do a Snake Eyes movie without Storm Shadow. Oh, that's ex like the the. It's exciting that Henry Golding. I, I like him. I've seen him. Uh, I think he's a good choice for uh, you know the leading yeah, role. And uh, that's exciting. And I guess uh, like yeah, his first action movie he, maybe. He was in The Gentleman. I think it's a Guy Ritchie movie, but I haven't seen that. Okay. Yet. So maybe he has yeah. some action scenes. Yeah, I haven't in seen that. that. I haven't seen that either. Like like uh, just from. A quick glance, it looks like a heist movie or something. Yeah. So maybe there's some action, but it's like there's a difference. But like Snake Eyes is basically a superhero, so it's like you're you're in. You know, it's not a Marvel. It's it is a Marvel movie, but it's not like. But it is, like he is playing like a superhero. Like that's working on the GI Joe characters. That's how I view them. I view like like they're you know like if um, you know they're superheroes. If Captain America is a superhero, if Deadpool's a superhero, if. Um, Nick Fury's a super you like the G.I. Joe character. Roblox is a superhero. Yeah, Ro yeah, then Roblox is a superhero. And Snake Eyes certainly. Like Snake Eyes is like this close to being uh, uh, Daredevil or Spider Man or something, you he, know. He his costume in uh the movies even looks kinda like the Daredevil costume from uh the Hulk The Hulk episode. episode. Yeah. And uh we had Ray Park, Darth Maul himself, as Snake Eyes in uh I know he was in the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra. Does, I can't remember yeah, if he I don't plays know if he Snake, Eyes, Snake in Eyes in Retaliation. Yeah, I, I don't know either. Yeah, like, Snake Eyes in Retaliation is almost CGI. You know, like, yeah. like, he's, like you don't see any, like, evidence of a human being. <laughs> in it. You just kind of see, like, you know, this, like, um, yeah, like, just armor. Like, he's animated armor. Yeah, he's playing a superhero, basically. And it's like, it's like, I, like, I, just because of, like, how I came, like, I think of G.I. Joe characters as Marvel characters. They were a Marvel comic. They were Marvel animation. You know, yeah. like it's it's like so like yeah, uh, they're not part of Marvel Studios, not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. IDW makes the comics, not Marvel. But it's like th they'll always be a Marvel <laughs> comic to me. You know, you're right. A lot of pra look like a lot of practical effects. Yeah, yeah, and again, like like the the their track record for like I know the GI Joe movie. Like I think GI Joe Retaliation was like a hit. Yeah. successful but i i know like the first one wasn't so it's like but to me they're hit like i love those the, the gi joe movies and i think this one's uh gonna be great too you're right because like i i don't know how much of a hit the first one was and when this one came out i was actually like 
Surprise, Surprise. how good it was, yeah. I didn't think they were going to make a sequel. I was like, oh sure. no, they blew it on the, their... They I shot their I, shot. Yeah, I guess, like, you know, there's enough money. Uh, the just, Rock has a lot of juice problems. Yeah, the juice... Uh, uh, the, the juice. I call it the rock. The juice. The the rock probably. The juice. Is, don't want to let the juice lose on the, the set of the rock. Retaliation. The rock might have been responsible for this movie getting made. I think like, like if he came in and was like, "Hey, I love GI Joe when I was a kid. Let's make like if he if he got his muscle behind this, that could help." They're get like it. green light. Green light. Yeah. You know, Roadblock and Duke are such a great pair, and like the idea of like making you think it's going to be a Duke and Roadblock movie, and they like great swerve, and um, and just like in the com like Duke and Roadblock were a great pair in the comics. Like they are introduced in the same issue, and they make like this amazing entrance. Like they just kind of you know they just kind of take over the comic. It's it's like so beautiful. So it's like cool seeing like a movie that centers around them but we're talking about Snake Eyes uh, yeah Snake I didn't I didn't see The Rock in the cast list for Snake Eyes so what, if, what if he shows up like as a, as a surprise cameo yeah and he starts shilling his uh, new tequila like tear him up <laughs> you know here's my one hope for the movie that like like and, and I love I love the whole G.I. Joe thing I love Larry Hama and, and what he created but like I have like one pet peeve in like the G.I. Joe universe the, the Baroness so she's in this and like the Baroness like you know she kind of shows up in the G.I. Joe comics and then eventually it's like you know it's like it's like oh it's Baroness de Cobre and it's like oh okay that's obviously like an alias she created because it's got Cobra in there the Baroness de Cobre that's, that's not her real name that's 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 like a fake name she came up as, as like a you know like a um like an alias or whatever that's not a real name but then like as the series goes on and then they show her backstory they make it where like de cobre which is this obvious like joke they make it into like her actual name like like yes she is born the baroness de cobre blah blah, blah. And it's like i don't like 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 so please don't do that in the movie like that's that's my only request like like an actual name and then she adopts de cobre as this like jokey Alias, please don't make that be the, the name on her birth certificate. Please, the Cobra. Uh, yeah. It's like a character's like does an alias like Phil McCracken. Phil, exactly. And yeah. then like they like elaborate <laughs> like he comes from a long line of McCrackens or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Pat McCrack. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah, you Dick should. hurts. <laughs> please, that's my that's my only request. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Phil McCracken. <laughs> Jack Mayhoff. <laughs> Jack Mayhoff. <laughs> yes, please, please. Let's 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 do away with, the, with this uh, De, De Cobre thing. I I had the time of my life when I saw GI Joe Retaliation. So like I'm you know, and and and, and like the, in GI Joe Retaliation, there's this beautiful like see, it's almost like like a um, digression or something where like. You know, there's all this stuff that's going on in the story, and then we like digress to this like elaborate set piece with like um, uh, the blind master and all these like sort of like red ninjas and and snake eyes and storm shadow. It's like, it's like amazing set piece. It's just so much fun, and it's like to get a movie that's like all that. You know, is, is you know, sign me up. And I I like how they're like different like i like in in uh gi joe rise of cobra it's more like over the top and like mm -hmm. kind of like not in a bad way like a little more silk like like yeah more like, like, going like comic for broke. Yeah. like going for broke and this one's you know a little more on the action me side i i love them both in the gi joe cartoon and the gi joe comics you could have like a total reset of the team where it's like okay one issue it's this team and it's these guys and then the next issue it's like a totally different set of characters you know like maybe like one character in, but like because it's like this big team you can, and, and like i really like that too where it's like rise of cobra is like a bunch of you know of the gi joes and then um retaliation is like a completely different set of gi joes that are like as much like as prime time you know, as as the ones in the first one, it's like, okay, you don't have Scarlet, you have Lady J. You know, you don't... Love it. You know, so it's kind of cool. Steven Summers, who did The Mummy, he's got his mummy players, Arnold Vosloo mm -hmm. in the house, as, uh, I think, Zar is it Zartan? Zartan, yeah. Yeah, great. Zartan was, was so good in this. 
I, when I was doing Transformers versus G.I. Joe, I'm like, okay, yeah, who's Zart? Like, I gotta have Zartan kind of like infiltrate and be somebody, you know, like be in disguise, you know, be be somebody in disguise and really do some damage from from the inside. And so in, uh, in Transformers versus G.I. Joe, Zartan was Wild Bill. Like, he like impersonates oh, yeah. Wild Bill and then he like commandeers Wild Bill's helicopter and starts like decapitating people with, with the helicopter. <laughs> I love that. And then, like, like, um, <laughs> Like Planet Terror from from uh, oh hell when when you know the helicopter starts killing all those zombies, that's the like rock. a cool yeah that's like a cool um, kind of like action set piece like a way to have like just this small team survive this like big attack that takes out the whole you know the whole rest of the team jump down the well I'm I'm hoping Doctor Venom will show, like because they 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 had like in the first one they had a part that. Could, would have been a, a perfect fit for Dr. Venom, but they made it Dr. Mindbender instead. Larry Hama, like, and, and he, he, like, doesn't read anybody's uh, G.I. Joe comics, except his, his own, like, and, and uh, you know, he said, like, the characters just mean too much to him. They're too personal. He just can't do it. He can't read it. And, and he said, like, you know, like, Chuck Dixon is, like, one of his best friends in comics, and he doesn't even read Chuck, and he's the one who got Chuck Dixon the job writing G.I. Joe comics, and he doesn't even read Chuck Dixon's G.I. Joe comics, he just can't do it. But, like, Larry created this amazing character of Dr. Venom, this, like, really great character, and then, like, you never see him again in the G.I. Joe comics, never see him again. And then Transformers versus G.I. Joe, I bring Dr. Venom back with a vengeance. Yes. Like, I turn him into, like, an A... Like, he, like he's an A-list character in my G.I. Joe universe. Um, you know, and, and then, maybe, like, a year later or whatever... You know, after this long absence, Larry Hama brings back Dr. Venom and brings him back in a big way. And I, I can't help but think, like, okay, maybe, maybe he read my comics, maybe he didn't read my comics, but maybe he got word about this really cool rendition of Dr. Venom. So it was kind of, you know, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah, when there's smoke, there's definitely yeah. he's Dr. Venom. I mean, in any of it, I mean, it's his guy, it's his character, like, he, like my Dr. Venom is a tribute to his Dr. Venom. So it's a book, but, but like, I think that happens sometimes. I think sometimes, you know, somebody creates something and then kind of forgets about it. And then somebody else comes along and is like, hey, that thing you created is really cool. And then it reminds them, it's like, oh yeah, that guy is pretty cool. And then they kind of bring him out of mothball. That's what, I, Tom, I'm telling you, that's what happened. Hama was reading it <laughs> and he's like, we got to get Dr. Venom back in action. <laughs> Dr. Venom, uh, He's almost like a meta fictional character. Like like he demanded to come back, you know, like he demand and, and he's back, you know. And every time I uh when I when I read your um, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, when I see him in the comic, I'm like I get I'm like I get surprised that he's like I'm like Doctor Venom because I, I didn't really remember him from like a, the act mm -hmm. like the toy line. Yeah, he's not part he was that, never a toy. That I, yeah, that's probably they probably like were like Okay, any of these characters that you created for the comic, please kill them off so that we can introduce actual, you know. And, and I think uh, Doc, I think Doctor Mindbender was originally going to be called Doctor Brainwave, and I think they refer to him as Doctor Brainwave in like like one issue, maybe the issue where they introduce the um, the creeper, uh, the creeper vines, and like the way Larry Hama brought back Doctor Venom, because like Doctor Venom dies in his comic, Doctor Venom died in my comic too. Uh, and, and so the way Larry brought it back was pretty cool that like there's this like brainwave scanner that that Dr. Venom created and like Snake Eyes gets hooked up to it at various points in like early G.I. Joe comics and so and so Larry's way of bringing him back was that before he died Dr. Venom like recorded his consciousness into the brainwave scanner Dr. Mindbender is hooked up to the brainwave scanner and then like Dr. Venom's like brain like downloads into his and so um, I read that comic and like little by little I've been working on like a sequel to Transformers vs. G.I. Joe just, just, oh my just in case, you know, just, just something in my back pocket. <laughs> and so like I looked at the way he brought back Dr. Venom and I thought like, ooh, and so like I, I took some oh notes boy. from the way he, oh and my so God. my thing would, was like, he's recorded in the brain, in mind he's recorded in the brainwave scanner also, but the way he comes back is, um, anyway, the cycle, the circle continues. <laughs> Tom, please. Uh, Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, the sequel. Yeah. I, um, 
I have a couple like names for it, but I'm not gonna not gonna not gonna Divulge, say here. But I, yeah, yeah, but I have some some names for what the sequel would be. And of course, uh, like at the end of Transformers versus GI Joe, it's hinted that this next one would be called Transformers Love GI Joe Generation Two. But but that's not the title, or or maybe it is. I don't. Know. Just that uh, I think this is gonna be another in the in the a line of great GI Joe flicks. Me too, and hopefully. It does so well that we don't have to wait, like, what, like, eight years for oh the next? Because it seems yeah. like there's a long... Like, we got this endless supply of, like, trans, of like shitty Transformers movies, but and then it's like, we get a great G.I. <laughs> Joe movie, then eight years, then another great like, G.I. Joe movie, and then eight years. Yeah, like, eight years between all these, like, let's just keep them, you know, let's shorten that gap. How, how cool is Snake Eyes? Bring out the Snake Eyes. <laughs> where's, where's the Snake Eyes? He's asleep. We'll wake him up. Yeah, Walt. Is that Walton? Go yeah, Walton. Walton Go Goggins. Yeah, yeah. Great cast. Like, I loved this movie, and it it was it was a hit. Like, it did well, but like, Hasbro hates this movie and views it as an abject failure because, for their purposes, it was financially disastrous because they created a whole bunch of toys. And, and like you gotta you do the, all this stuff way in advance and they were all timed to come out when this movie came out so it's like you got your toys you got your movie and the movie got delayed so they had like the it was already set in motion so the toys come out with no accompanying movie they bomb like Hasbro loses a zillion dollars you know and then you know a year later the movie comes out and it's a big hit but like the you know. Tom I was in uh, prep for this episode I have G.I. Joe Retaliation toys, which I'll have to show you. Oh, but, I want to see them, yeah. But uh, but I got them at Target. They were like a dollar a piece. They were like yeah. marked down yeah, to a dollar, like two bucks. Yeah, I have the price tag. So they, they were designed to coincide with this movie and, and no movie. I was like, I, 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 I was walking by, I'm like, uh, yeah, the whole entire G.I. Joe toy line for like six bucks. I'm like, yes. sign me up. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was Cobra Commander in the first movie. And then in this movie, like, I don't know if it's him in that tank, but you do see some eyes and they blink, it, and then and then they're like, you don't get to be in this movie. Yeah. The uh, it's a three named actor in the first one, Joseph Gordon Levitt. So for this one, to Cobra Commander, they get Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> they get Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. Yeah, you've been watching the uh, Snake Eyes trailer episode of of uh, Total the Recall. Recall. Show. Um, it's going to slither its way into the theaters. It's 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 uh, looking pretty dicey. <laughs> oh, I hope it doesn't crap. Out. <laughs> I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby: The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Transformers vs. GI Joe, and Fantastic Four Grand Design. I'm Matt Zioli. Please uh, check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Tom Scholey. Follow me on Twitter at Tom Scholey. Follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tune. And we'll see you at the Snake, Snake Eyes, Eyes movie. movie.